All right, so welcome. Um, today I'm looking at ray marching and I want to deal with combinations of shapes. So um, let's say, for instance, we have two spheres and they are sort of intersecting. Um, there's a number of different shapes which can be formed by this interaction. Um, specifically, we can take the union, which is just both shapes together. We can take the intersection, which is only the common the, the common area, the surface formed by, you know, space being within both shapes, and then we can take the difference. And between these, we have all the mechanism really to describe all sorts of constructions that we can build from interactions of different shapes. Apologies for my voice, I'm getting over a sickness, it's, it's not been fun, but anyway. Right, so, um, just as a refresher, remember that with ray marching, or sphere marching, we have a point and a direction for the ray, but what we do is we deal with the signed distance field. So we deal with the distance from the point to the closest object. So let's say we have some sphere here and there's some way of measuring the distance to this point. We'll call that A, I guess. And we have some other sphere and it has a different distance to the point B. Then it turns out these operations can really be enacted by operating on the two distances. I don't know if that makes sense, but let's go with it. So to start with, we'll deal with the union. So I'm just going to draw this up um, as a reminder. I think general set theory will be useful here. So as a reminder, the union is all the shapes, uh, all the space, all the points which is in one shape or the other shape or both. Okay, so then the question is, okay, well, now if we're accepting all of this together, what is the closest distance to any of it? And then clearly the closest distance to any of it would be just the closer of the two distances. And so for union, I'll write this like, um, let's say, shape A, union with shape B, that will be really the minimum distance. There we have it. I mean, I'm really, I'm really not sure um, as to a better way of explaining that, um, but let's have a look at the intersection. So remember the intersection is the space which is in both shapes. Okay, so the way I would think of this is, let's say we're at a case where the ray could very easily just march forward and touch this shape. What we want to do is that's just satisfied one of the spheres. We want to march it forward until it also touches the second sphere. And so in this case, the intersection, which is denoted like this, will be the maximum of the distances. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let me put this another way. Okay, so let's say we have, yeah, we want this area here and the ray is coming up like this. Okay, so it should just be ending here if it was just going for, for shape A. But there's also shape B. Um, so if we go distance to shape A, it's that far that we would be marching it right onto shape A. Um, it also has some distance to shape B. We take the maximum of that, which causes it to march through shape A. And then as we continue, see distance here will be like negative or something. So it should be inside shape A. I don't know if this is even a useful explanation, but anyway, we'll keep going. Um, take the larger of those distances as a positive distance to shape B. And so, the sphere, uh, the ray, sorry, will actually just keep marching through and miss the shape. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now, the last one is a difference. 
But in order for the difference to make sense, I'm going to talk about another operation, which I call negation, or inversion, I guess. So let's take it back to set theory. Here's a sphere. Here are all the points on the interior of the sphere. Now, if we were to take the complement, negation, inversion, whatever you want to call it, that would be flipping things around. So now the interior points are outside like this. It seems a little silly. I wouldn't, yeah, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. Um, but let's go complement. And that is, I'll do this. All we need to do is take the distance and negate it switch it around to negative one. Remember over here, all these distances inside, remember the surface of the sphere has a distance of zero. Outside should be positive, inside should be negative. Well, then we just flip it around. Now, the purpose of that is that if you remember from, remember from um, set theory, if you, in set theory, we have the set difference. And that is expressed as all the points which are inside A, and not inside B. And so actually the set difference can be expressed in terms of fundamental operations. So that would be maximum of A and not B, which comes across like this. Cool. And from a diagram point of view, um, if we have A subtract B, it would be something like that. Now it's going to look different in 3D because there'll be some, well, anyway, we'll, we'll see in the example. But anyway, those are the fundamental operations. And what you'll find as you go on and look at more shapes, which you'll actually be doing in the next video, I, I believe, is that a lot of these operations will be, will be there under the hood. So as a quick example, let's say, for instance, we're looking at the signed distance field for a box. Well, a box is actually the intersection of four lines. So the surface would satisfy these four lines. And so you'll find that when we're finding the distance, it'll be something like, you know, the maximum of the distance to this line and the distance to this line and so on and so on, um, because that is the intersection operation. Anyway, but I'll be going more in detail on that in a future video. For now, let's jump into the code and have a look at some of these operators. All right, so here we are. We've got our, our ray marcher from before with a single sphere. We've got a little cat running around down here. Say hello. That's nice. Okay, so um, let's modify this to handle multiple spheres, which I know I... <laughs> Let's set up the environment, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And then we'll uh, do some intersections and things. So we'll just open up the shaders. Say goodbye to the cat for now. Um, and I'm just going to... Oh, that's not great. Okay. This is a little tangential, but I'm just going to change this so that it dispatches a different number of threads to um, take advantage of that. So just go down to the renderer and then, oh, oh yeah, side note, not great. So what we can do is if you're getting an error like this, like WebGPU just isn't accepting these, these things, it's a weird little update. I'll have to fix it. But anyway, if you go to your TS config file, right down here, we have type roots and types. And it turns out I'm about the, the hackiest web dev I know. Like I'm not a web developer. I'll just say that. But it turns out that if we get rid of this types, then Node will recognize everything just fine. We can go back to the renderer and that's all working. Okay, cool. So where I was is I wanted to just change this so that it dispatched uh, bigger work groups. So just go down to the render bit and then here we are, dispatch work groups. If we go, so I want to dispatch basically an eight by eight tile of threads at the same time. It can handle that. There we go. All right. So, I mean, that, that should make no difference, but we can run it anyway. It's going a little faster, but it's 
probably limited by other things at the moment. That's not a big deal. Okay, so what I wanted to get to was defining a whole bunch of spheres. Okay, that's great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify, I'm going to modify the um, distance to sphere function so that instead of simply a sphere, it will take an index and look into that array. Just really closely double checking in case I mixed anything up, but I think that's okay. Great, so now I'll go back to the main function and all this like defining my sphere and all that, I'll get rid of that. Okay, and now I'll just quickly set this up so that I'm showing all the spheres on the screen. Okay, let's give that a shot. See if we've got any errors. It would not be the first time. That's totally fine. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Of course. Do not forget your semicolons. There we go. Okay, cool. So we have these three pairs of spheres, and I'm going to try to set it up so that one of them is union, one of them is intersection, and the other one is difference. As you can see from the video before, we're currently doing union on all of them because this minimum operation is the union operation. But let me just pop down here and I'll create these um, operations. Okay, yep. Looks good. Then we'll do the intersection. And then just for fun, we're not really going to use this, but we could also have the complement or the negation. And finally, the difference. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and use those. So I'll go up here and instead of just going through all of them, we'll go through them in pairs. Unfortunately, this line is getting a little big, but there we have it. Okay, cool. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, yeah, we're taking the union of sphere zero and sphere one, and then we'll do the same thing. Actually, I'll just leave that there, make this a little more gradual. So let's have a look at that one. There we go. Now, for some reason, this has sort of reversed the convention where up is down, down is up. I'm not too worried about that. I'll leave it as is. Um, but let's now take the intersection. So it's the intersection of sphere two and sphere three. Oh, watch out for typos. There we go. Yeah, that's the common space between both shapes. Okay. And now the difference. So the difference between, I guess, sphere four and five. Okay, now what you can see here, this does look a little awkward, but I'm hoping that it's just because we're doing, we're taking a two dimensional, well, because we're flat shading this. I'll say that. I'm hoping it's just because we're flat shading this and there is actually a proper 3D cross section. Like it doesn't just look like we chopped off the side or something. Hey, let's, let's find out at a future point. So there we go. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I mean, I really do think it's nice how elegant these operations are. 
in a future video, we will start looking at various signed distance fields for different shapes beyond just spheres. Anyway, all the best. Hope you had fun and I'll see you again soon. Bye.